Well, hi guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well. So um, for today's reading, we are basically gonna be asking like why your person is not communicating with you. What is blocking them? Um, so this is gonna be geared more towards like no contact situations or if you are involved with somebody who's just not really opening up to you or expressing themselves to you or the connection just seems to be kind of stagnating. Um, we have three oracle cards here. These are from the lover's oracle deck one two and three um i'll let you guys you know take a look at these cards you can meditate on the person you're thinking about um as usual all of my links will be in the description below so you can check those out if you want to today i'm also going to be using for you guys um this is the modern witch tarot this is the latest um, in my collection. Somebody very kindly gifted it to me recently. And um, yeah, so <laughs> I think we're gonna just go ahead and get started. Um, if you're not ready yet, you can pause the video and take as long as you need to to make your choice. But um, I think we're just gonna jump right into this with group number one. So group one, this is your oracle card. It says, okay, this is forgiveness. And it says, stop focusing your energy on past events for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality by what you think, dream, and imagine. So that is your oracle card. That's kind of setting the tone for our reading today. So let me shuffle here and get some cards for you. <clears throat> okay, we've got the Four of Pentacles, the Lovers, Knight of Swords, <clears throat> the Devil, King of Pentacles, um, Five of Swords, and let me get one more. Okay, Nine of Swords. So, um, group one, the first thing that's really standing out to me uh, with these cards is like this feeling of anxiety and uncertainty. Um, the Nine of Swords here, this card is really about like stress and overthinking things, being really stuck in your head about something. The Devil is um, a little bit similar sometimes. This card usually represents um, well, it can represent like any sort of situation where a person might feel stuck or trapped or restricted. Um, this card can represent things like toxic relationships, codependencies, addictions, mental health issues, all sorts of things like along those lines. Um, and then we also have here the Five of Swords, which um, relates to like defeat, disappointment. Um, it can indicate like a hollow kind of victory, like, you know, getting something that you wanted, but it doesn't turn out as good as you thought it was going to be. It doesn't feel as good as you thought it would. It ends up just being sort of a um, disappointment to you. Um, and then we also have here the Four of Pentacles, which this card relates a lot to authority and control. Um, a lot of times it represents like trying to hold on to something, being unwilling to let go of something. The Lovers, this is about unions, partnerships. It's also a card of balance and a card of choice. This is considered to be, you know, one of the soulmate cards. It can represent strong um, like connections between people. And um, 
the Knight of Swords is really about like communication, honesty, insight. This is definitely a very action oriented card. And um, it really talks to me about like, I, I get a very uh, determined kind of vibe from the Knight of Wands. And in some cases, the energy of this card can even be kind of harsh, kind of cutting, okay? Um, and then lastly is the King of Pentacles. And this is really like stability and security. The King of Pentacles is a very prosperous, very abundant kind of figure. Um, in the context of like relationships, normally the King of Pentacles talks to me about commitment and dedication that sort of thing. Um, so with all of that said, um, immediately it seems to me like there has been some kind of conflict with this person or some kind of falling out with this individual, you know, just given like the devil card being here, the five of swords. Um, it seems to me that, hmm, well, I, I feel like for some of you guys, you know, you tried to make things work. You guys tried to take your relationship into a particular direction, but it didn't quite pan out the way you anticipated. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like for some of you, you know, maybe initially you really felt like, okay, this is it. This is going to work. This is the person for me. You know, you might have felt a very strong connection to this individual. Um, but for whatever reason, things just didn't work or couldn't work. Um, I feel like the two of you maybe had some misunderstandings or miscommunications. Um, or uh, uh, the person you're thinking about simply didn't communicate with you. Um, and that maybe was at the root of the issues in, in, in your relationship. But regardless, you know, now there's all of this distance between the two of you. And um, despite that, though, I feel like this person is not really willing to release your connection. Okay, I feel like regardless of what happened, regardless of, you know, the separation, however long you've been apart from each other, whatever, I, I feel like this person is still holding on to your connection. They still have an emotional attachment to you. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like they have a lot of regret and a lot of worry pertaining to like what happened between the two of you. Okay, I feel like they, from, from their perspective, they feel as though, they feel as though things went wrong and it was their fault. Okay, do you know what I'm saying? Like they feel as though they are responsible for things not working out. Um, and it's like they, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm like, I'm trying to figure out, um, how to how I want to explain what I'm getting here I feel as though for a lot of you when you were with this person or when you were talking to this person um <clears throat> they maybe had a hard time like really opening up and allowing themselves to be vulnerable with you or emotionally intimate with you do you know what I'm saying um I feel like they maybe were very guarded um or very cautious like overly cautious and that could have really contributed to things you know turning out the way that they did um because like you might have interpreted their their standoffishness or their guardedness as them not being interested or not being willing to make an effort with you um but in reality it's like I feel like they were very fearful. I feel like they were very afraid of opening up because of maybe past experiences that they've had, which is kind of interesting. I feel like um, this individual maybe has had some traumatic, <clears throat> traumatic experiences in their past relationships. Um, and I mean, for some, this could even go back to like their childhood, but regardless, I, I feel as though the root of their issue, the root of their, you know, communication problems, their, you know, them being distant with you, whatever, 
I just, I feel like their blockage has a lot to do with some kind of trauma they have endured that they haven't been able to heal from or move on from. It's like they have a lot of emotional baggage that they're carrying with them. And it's essentially that is what caused them to do, you know, whatever it was that they did or didn't do that resulted in, you know, where the two of you are now. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> with the forgiveness card being here, you know, um, forgiveness, healing and acceptance are concepts that really tie in a lot with forgiveness for me. Um, this isn't necessarily talking about your person learning to forgive like whoever hurt them in the past, um, but I feel like this is kind of talking about them needing to learn how to forgive themselves and how to, um, I, I want to say, come to terms like with some of their experiences. Does this make sense? Um, <clears throat> Because it just seems like emotionally this person is very blocked and they just have a hard time being open and vulnerable and just embracing love and allowing themselves to be loved and to give love in return. Um, I feel like they don't really know how to hmm, how do I want to say this it's like they're they're not really sure because of their past experiences how to tell the difference between a toxic relationship and a healthy relationship do you know what I'm saying it's it's like they kind of mix things up they kind of misinterpret certain signals <laughs> and I think a lot of it just has to do with like They've, they've probably not had a lot of experience with, you know, in like a, a, a regular, normal, healthy, functional relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's not necessarily what they're used to. And so because your connection felt different, it was kind of scary. It was kind of like, what? what is this? You know, this isn't like anything I've experienced before. And that kind of intimidates me. You know what I mean? Um, I think that maybe had a lot to do with, with why this person pulled back from you. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like I feel like they haven't let go of this. You know, like I was saying earlier, they haven't let go of this. They are, I, I think they are working on trying to better themselves. I feel like on some level for most of you, they have recognized like their triggers, like what caused them to pull back. And they're, they're trying to work on overcoming those issues. Um, so that they can come back towards you in the future and you guys can try to reconnect or, you know, start over again, whatever. Um, because like with the Four of Pentacles being here and the Lovers and the Knight of Swords, I feel like they want to communicate with you, like they want to connect with you, but um, they, they don't feel like they're quite ready yet. Um, <clears throat> But this person is, I, I think at this point in time, it seems to me like this person is feeling um, somewhat confident in themselves. Like they're, they're developing more confidence in their ability to heal and to move forward from what has been blocking them. And um, I think they're kind of cautiously optimistic about the future of your relationship. And you know, whether they have talked to you about this stuff or not, it just seems like, it seems like they want you to have some patience with them. And they're hoping that you are not writing them off completely. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, 
that's that's really what I'm seeing here as far as why this person is not communicating what's what's holding them back um, just their own issues their own um, things that that they need to heal from and work through and I do think that they are doing that based on what I'm seeing here I feel like they are working on that um, so there is hope for this relationship. There is still potential for this connection to be healed in the future. Um, it's just going to take time, you know. So group number one, I think that's going to do it for you guys for today. Um, I hope that this resonated with you. I hope this was interesting and you enjoyed. Um, leave me a comment if you want. I always like to hear from you guys. As usual, um... My All of my links and stuff are in the description below if you want to check that stuff out. I do offer personal readings if that's something that you may be interested in. And um, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope I see you next time. Bye. Okay, those of you who chose um, card number two, you have Reflection. And it says, give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. Okay, so that's your oracle card. That's kind of setting the tone for your reading today. Let's get some tarot cards for you guys and see what comes out. We have Seven of Cups, <clears throat> the High Priestess. Eight of Swords, Five of Swords, Whoa. Four of Wands, Page of Swords, and the Five of Pentacles. Okay, so. <clears throat> Let me move these over a little bit. Um, group two, the first thing that is apparent to me when I'm looking at these cards, I'm getting something about choice. Like the person you're thinking about um, had to make a choice pertaining to like what was in their best interest okay um and i'm gonna elaborate on that a little bit uh so okay the first card that we have here is the seven of cups this is really uh, about choice it's about having options um it shows up a lot in situations where somebody has you know a lot of different things to choose from a lot of options available to them and they may be feeling kind of confused or uncertain about what the best decision for them is going to be like what's the best path for me to take here we also have the high priestess which is about um really this is a very spiritual kind of energy it's associated with intuition it's also associated with insight and it's a very solitary, very contemplative kind of vibe that I get from her a lot of times. We also have the Eight of Swords, which is um, usually this is about like somebody feeling trapped, somebody feeling stuck or confined in some way. Um, it can also represent isolation, withdrawal, someone just feeling as though maybe feeling as though they can't fully be themselves for some reason. Um, this card can represent like somebody being held back or like repressed by um, self-limiting thoughts or beliefs or, you know, something, something usually like mental, um, some kind of thought or idea that they, they have to suppress themselves, if that makes sense. Um, the Five of Swords relates to defeat and disappointment. Um, this card a lot of times is indicative of like a, a situation that 
really just hasn't gone according to plan. Like sometimes it can represent getting something that you want or that you thought you wanted, but it doesn't turn out to be as good as you expected. Um, it's it's like a victory, but a hollow victory. It's it, It's like, man, I really thought this was gonna be more fulfilling, more satisfying, whatever, but it's just not. It's just not doing it for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, the Four of Wands here. This is about unity, harmony, um, partnerships. The energy of this card is very uplifting and very celebratory. Um, this card can also represent like very strong bonds between people in some cases. Um, in general, I, I really just see this as a lot of times as um, somebody kind of finding their place, finding where they feel like they really fit in. The Page of Swords here is associated with communication, clarity, insight. It's also, um, it also kind of talks to me about like curiosity, intrigue, exploration, um, wanting to like learn more about things or, or in some cases learn more about the self. It can, it can be about self-exploration as well. And then lastly is the Five of Pentacles. This is about loss and grief and um, abandonment, okay? It can represent feeling like you've been left out, feeling isolated, feeling, um, feeling like you've lost something meaningful to you. So with all of that said, like I mentioned earlier, I feel like the person we're talking about here um, found themselves, it's like they found themselves in a situation where they felt as though they had to make a choice between your connection and something else, something else that was important and meaningful to them. And I feel for a lot of you, unfortunately, it, it, it seems like from their perspective, they felt like they had to choose between your connection and Hmm. I'm trying to figure out how I want to, how I want to put this. Like it was, it was you or themselves. Like something about your connection made them feel as though they were being confined in some way. It made them feel as though they could not wholly be themselves. And this is not saying that you that you know this is not saying that there was anything wrong with your approach to this relationship necessarily this isn't necessarily saying that you were like toxic to this person or anything like that you know so don't like don't feel like this reading is accusing you of being a horrible person or anything like that because it's not um but it's like They felt as though they needed distance in order to really find themselves. They felt like they needed to, they, they needed space to figure some things out for themselves. I, I feel like this person has maybe been reevaluating a lot of things, like reevaluating what's important to them, you know, what their values are, where they wanna go in life. And I think for some of you, um, as this person has been doing all of that contemplation, I feel that some of them have kind of come to the conclusion that the two of you just aren't really in alignment with each other anymore, or that you're not quite, you're not really going in the same direction anymore in your lives. Um, <clears throat> it's like they just, they just feel as though they need space, they need freedom, they need time to themselves to figure out who they are and what they're going to be and what they're going to do in this life, what their purpose is. And I think that there's not necessarily anything um, wrong with that. You know, it is, usually it is easier um, to do this kind of evaluation um, when you're on your own and you don't really have to be investing time and energy into a partnership. Um, however, I do feel like for some of you, this person maybe went about this separation in a not so great way. You know, they may not have really communicated to you 
exactly what was going on in their head or why they were pulling back and maybe left you just confused and like thinking like what's okay what's happening you know what I'm saying um this is kind of t this is kind of a tough situation because you know this this is not saying that things are totally over between the two of you I mean you know this is a general reading so this is just like the strongest collective energy for all of you who chose this group um so this is not necessarily saying that this separation is going to be permanent or that this ending is permanent um for some of you i feel like this is just a temporary separation and you guys are going to come back together um like when it is hmm like when both of you are ready for this, I, I feel like for some of you, this is a situation where it's like right person, wrong time. You know what I'm saying? Like you guys came together, but it, it wasn't time yet for this union to happen. You guys weren't ready for it yet to happen. And so you guys have been pushed apart again. Um, does that make sense? I think that's the case for some of you. Um, for others of you, this may be a more, uh, I guess, permanent separation going on. And I feel like intuitively, you're probably going to know which, which scenario is the case for you. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, really the gist of this message is that they are not communicating. They are blocked in your connection because they are focused on figuring themselves out and doing like like finding their place in this world in this universe in this life um and i think i think it is important that they're able to have that time and that space to do that so that they can grow and and develop a, a deeper understanding of themselves um, because, you know, if, if you guys do come back together, it's important that <laughs> they have that insight about themselves, um, and that they're, that they're able to have that opportunity for growth and maturity. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I, th I think that's going to do it for you guys group too. That's really all that I'm getting for you. Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that they want to add to this. Um, okay. I am getting a one, one quick, like final message here. They're saying, it's not that our relationship was wrong for me. I do regret having to walk away from this, but at the end of the day, I am all I really have. You are all you really have. I have to do what's best for me. And it's not that this relationship wasn't good for me, but It's not the time for this. And um, I also just want to clarify again that, you know, this is not, this is not necessarily saying that you, that, that your relationship was um, like actually restrictive to them or that you wouldn't allow this person to be themselves or anything like that it's just it's it's personal okay it's very personal to them it's 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 their issue not really yours okay i just wanted to be very clear about that um so you ne didn't necessarily do anything wrong here okay um i just think it's important to you know respect this decision that they've made um even though for some of you they 
probably didn't go about it in the best way. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's going to do it for you guys group too. Um, I'm sorry I can't give you like better news, but that's what the cards have for you guys today. So I hope this was helpful. I hope that this resonated with you as well. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I am wishing you guys all the best. I hope I see you next time. Bye. And lastly, that brings us to card number three. If you chose card number three, you have only time will tell. Interesting. So this is going to kind of set the tone for your reading today. Um, let me pull some tarot cards for you and see what else comes out. We've got the Ace of Pentacles. Nope, that's a few too many cards. Five of Cups. Two of Cups. Five of Pentacles. <clears throat> Eight of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. We've got a lot of Pentacles energy here. And King of Pentacles. And then, um, we also have the chariot here. I'm going to go ahead and, and pull that out as well. It kind of, it, it flipped over when the King of Pentacles flew out. Um, so I'm going to take that too. Okay. So, all right. Um, like I said, we have a lot of earth energy coming through here. We've got the ace, the five, the eight, the six, and the King of Pentacles. Earth energy relates to usually like money, work, home life, um, the more material aspects of our lives. And in general, these cards signify like stability, security, groundedness, etc. Um, the Ace of Pentacles is about like new beginnings. All aces have that like new, fresh kind of energy. Um, this card can represent like job offers being made, monetary offers coming in, um, it can also signify like somebody trying to, I want to say somebody like working to um, establish themselves in some way or working to ground themselves or stabilize their situation somehow. Um, the five of pentacles relates to loss and grief and abandonment. Uh, it's, it's really like a card of instability or insecurity. The eight of pentacles is about hard work, making the effort to achieve a particular goal. It's about dedication. It's about commitment to your goals. Six of pentacles relates to balance and reciprocation generosity and equal give and take um the king of pentacles this is like the ultimate um the the ultimate energy of stability and abundance and prosperity and and feeling safe and secure and grounded in your circumstances or in your environment um we also have here the five of cups which is kind of similar to the five of pentacles in the sense that again this card is about loss and sadness it can also represent like um a pessimistic kind of attitude or somebody being very focused on the negatives in a situation the two of cups here is about unions and partnerships unconditional love it represents to us like strong emotional bonds between people and it can sometimes even signify soul level connections and then the chariot this is a very action-oriented card. To me, this is about ambition and drive and willpower. Um, and it's also like a card of choice. And it can also relate to um, facing adversity, you know, overcoming obstacles, that sort of thing. So um, with all of this earth energy being here, I really get the impression that the person you're thinking about 
may be very much focused on the more material aspects of their life. So this person may be very, um, very focused right now on like their job or their financial situation or their living situation. I just feel like there's some kind of um, insecurity in their life pertaining to one or more of those general areas of their life. Um, that's just causing them to feel very imbalanced and very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They're, they, they just seem to be feeling really like, I want to say untethered. That's, that's the word that's specifically coming to mind for me. Um, it just seems to me like there's a lot of uncertainty that they're experiencing right now relating to their job or their home or their money situation. And it's causing them a lot of stress and a lot of uncertainty. And um, that seems to be like what this person is primarily focused on at this point in time. Um, with the Two of Cups being here, I do feel like your connection is important to this person. I do feel like they have an attachment to you. I do feel like they care about you. Um, and it seems to me like they are feeling sad about having to distance themselves. But it's like they feel as though it's necessary for them to do that because I, I, I get the sense that they don't want you to get mixed up in their problems. They don't want you to feel obligated to help them in any way. They don't want you to, you know, get yourself into any kind of trouble, like trying to help them. You know what I'm saying? Um, they, they just don't want to put any kind of stress on you because of their issues that they're dealing with. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> so right now, even though the choice has been kind of difficult, um, this person has chosen to focus their energy and their attention on sorting out these problems that they're facing um, rather than putting the majority of their focus and attention on your connection. But it's like they feel as though in order to be their best selves, in order to like be able to really invest in your relationship and like give you what you need, they need to feel secure and stable and safe first. You know what I'm saying? They need to address the stressors in their life first. Um, I'm like, <laughs> sorry, I'm like getting out of breath. Uh, yeah, um, this is not like, this is not a situation, as far as I can see, this is not a situation where, you know, this person just isn't into you or they're just not, they're just not interested in the relationship or anything like that because they are. Um, but it's just a matter of them having more like pressing, I want to say needs. Um, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the hierarchy of, of needs going on here. You know, in order to like flourish in your relationships with other people, first you have to feel secure. You have to have that, you know, base uh, sense of stability. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, and it's like this person doesn't feel like they really have that and they're trying to achieve that for themselves. It's possible that they've lost lost a job or lost a lot of money somehow or they have lost their home even or like their home life has become really unstable, really unpredictable somehow and they're trying to get out of that situation and into a more stable environment. Um, but yeah, I, I really feel like this person is just kind of hoping for you to be patient with them. You know, time will tell. This is like, this kind of implies that things are going to improve, but it's going to take some time. You know, it's, it's going to require a little bit of patience on your part and understanding and, um, you know, not not to like make excuses for anybody because I, I think that 
you know, regardless of what's going on in your life, if you really care about someone and you really care about a relationship, you should be able to communicate with that person like what's going on. And I don't know if this person really has done that with you or not. Um, but if they haven't and you've just been left kind of in the dark, like wondering what's happening, that's what I'm seeing as far as what's happening. Um, and I do feel like they're going to come back towards you. They're going to approach you again. And um, I, I, I think that they will make an apology to you. Whether you accept it or not is totally up to you. But um, yeah, this is... It's like they're they're trying to be their best self, I mean, for you, like so that they can really invest and throw them you like like put their all into your relationship. It's like as long as they have all of this instability and uncertainty around them, they feel like they can't do that. Um so I hope that makes sense. That's really what I'm getting for you guys group 3. Um I hope that this resonated with you. I hope this was interesting. Uh, leave me a comment if you want. I always like to hear from you guys. Even just like tell me tell me how your day was. Like how are you? <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope I see you guys next time. Bye.